Today we're gonna to turn these four pieces of paper into a metal print using sublimation. I'm gonna take you through the entire process, how I do it. These are orders for my business, so we're gonna make them and pack them up. So the first thing I do is I print out these images. I get them all set. I use an Epson F570 to print them. And then I take these sublimation panels. They have a special coating on top that allows the ink from the paper to transfer into this coating. And it makes a really nice image. A lot nicer than what you see on this paper. So I gotta pull this plastic off. And I just take it and I make sure nothing, nothing is on it. Sometimes little dust particles can get on it. I'm gonna take my panel, and I'm gonna lay it over the image and I make sure that it's on perfectly straight. I put a bleed edge around it, it's 0.2 inches. This allows me to make sure that everything is lined up straight. If you print the paper too small, if you print that bleed edge too small, when you put it into the heat press, either the image shrinks or the heat, the aluminum expands because you'll get a white border around the whole piece of metal when it's done if you didn't print the image large enough. I learned that the hard way. I printed a bunch of panels one day, not paying attention. I wanted to test it and I wasn't thinking much of it. And then when I went to look at the finished product, all of the orders were messed up. Not a good thing. I had to redo all of them because you can't fix them. What's nice about making a mistake like that is once you make it the first time, you usually don't make it again. So the way I look at it is every mistake I make is just a way, is just getting it out of the way for the future. So I never really have to worry about it. Though some of them might cost more than others, if we get it out of the way, then I don't have to worry about it in the future. And I know that we now can move forward in a better way, even though making mistakes always sucks. It's never fun to do, but you just deal with it. It's the price you gotta pay to get better at this and anything really. We got a lot of dog prints. This one, German Shepherd, and I think that was a lab. I can't show the other ones because they are private. They're, you know, couples photos and whatnot. Other things are to be filmed later. So there is quite a few that have to get done today, but these are the four that I can show. The first one I just did was a 12 by 18 that you just saw me make. This one is an eight by 12. So it's the same aspect ratio, but it is smaller. And this plastic is not easy to get off these smaller ones. I don't know what they use. They use two separate kinds of plastic, apparently on these smaller ones for this, at least this batch that I got. And this plastic is very stretchy and doesn't want to come off easily. It rips. I'm not a big fan of it, but again, something you deal with. Usually it comes off fairly easily. Make sure it's clean. Set this one on as well. The other one we have here is a 12 by 12 inch panel. Don't do as many of those as I thought I would. I used to do a ton of them and now not as many, which is kind of nice. I like doing these ones more. I guess most people don't really have a square photo as often. I know I certainly don't. This 12 by eight is the smallest that I do. I used to do a lot of smaller ones, four by six and six by six, four by eight, all of that, but became way too much to handle. You end up getting a lot of orders for them and you don't make much money on them, but they take the same amount of time. So the problem is it takes up all of your time to do them. And then you have no time to do things that are actually effective and kind of move you forward. They're a big waste of time. I guess if I had an employee, somebody could, somebody could do them and it may be worth it if they could do enough in an hour. But for me to be doing them while every, having everything else going on, it's just not worth it. This is sort of my rack here where I keep all my different sizes. I have 12 by eights here, eight, uh, 12 by 18s here, 20 by 30s and 18 by 24s down here. I also have 10 by 30s I just got in, the panoramic. These are the 10 by 30 panoramics that I just got in. I made one of these for a customer. We special ordered them, had to get a couple extras because you can't just buy one. And then a bunch of people wanted them. So almost sold out of these already. I've only had them a couple of days. I wish I knew that I would have bought more and have to get more, but they're very cool. Really like making these. I think these might be my favorite ones to make so far just because they look so unique compared to everything else. I wanted to show that because I want to start documenting my days a little bit more. The past few years, past probably two years, I didn't film 
really any long form videos showing everything that's going on, things that have been happening, the things that I've learned, mistakes I've made, and I really wish I had. It would be pretty cool to look back on that entire process. So now, moving forward, I'm gonna to try to document almost everything so that you guys can see it and can look back on it. It'd be really cool. It's always a big thing I hear from guys who have built things saying they wish they had documented the entire process so they could look back on it and see it. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna regret that. And so I'm gonna film it all. Hopefully you guys can get something out of it. Hopefully it's helpful, beneficial. I'll try to teach you guys, not teach you guys, but just show you guys everything. I don't have much to teach, but I can show you through experience. So what we're gonna do now is fit three of these panels inside this heat press here. This is a 24 by 32 inch kilo heat press. I cook these for five minutes at 350 degrees. I'm using this paper here on the bottom. This keeps ink off. I actually am reusing this. It has some, it gets ink on it uh, every time you heat press, but uh, you did a big print. So a few of these small ones can fit inside of it. Normally you can't reuse it, but when you go from big print to small print, sometimes you get lucky. I just like to reuse them because it saves a little bit. Not really money, it's probably like very minimal cost, but more, more or less just having to order another roll of this stuff. You run out kind of quick. I'm not really sure what the point of using a top sheet is. I mean, the ink only goes down. You're not really gonna get any ink on this top part, but I guess it's just for extra measure. I've always done it. I've always seen other people do it, and so I haven't really questioned whether or not it's useful. So you're gonna take this and lock it down. I use pretty decent pressure for it. While those are in the heat press, I'm gonna start building the frames for all of them. Let me get my material out here. This out. And I just count out all the pieces that I need. So I gotta make four of them, which means I need 16 pieces of each. We'll start by making two of them. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basically, all I have to do is take the screws and I put them through the holes on this. You probably can't really see it, but there are two holes in it and you just put the screws in and then you tighten them down and they press like spacers inside the frame and uh, they tighten down. That's how they, they expand and tighten down. I buy all these parts and frames along with the blanks from Beauty Sub. I'll have it linked in my description below. Um, I don't get a commission off them or anything. I just link it because a lot of you guys ask. I used to sell them on my website, but I realized that selling material was a really big uh, task to handle. It's a lot of upfront capital. Um, the profit margins aren't great on it, so it takes a lot of time. You put a lot into it to not get a lot out of it because it's not, it's, I'm not doing it at scale. So it's not really worth it. Just took away from the main thing, which wasn't valuable at all, like I thought it might be. So I did away with it, and now I just let you guys know where you can get them yourself if you wanna go through that whole process. Something I've learned massively over the past year and am consistently reminded of is to pick one thing and just focus on it. So when it came to these metal prints, I started making the metal prints and then I wanted to sell supplies too. I thought I would do both. Don't do both. Do one thing and get good at it and stick with it for a long period of time and the results will come and be far, far better than if you deluded yourself and did multiple things. That is advice I would continue to give, my, give to myself do just one thing. The results of your work will come later on if you just really, really focus on one specific thing. It will compound over time and get better and better and better as the years go on. I've made a lot of mistakes of trying to do multiple things at the same time, and honestly, it just dilutes your focus, you get less out of it, and completely not worth it. It makes decision-making really helpful too now because anything that is not this one thing, I pretty much just say no to. I don't do it and uh, keeps me very focused. So I'm just sliding these frames together. I put the corner brackets in and then I tighten them all the way down, not tight um, in the beginning. I sort of, so it's sort of like a wheel where I just snug each corner down and then I go around and I crank everything down tight in a star pattern. I don't think it matters, but it seems to be kind of helpful for keeping the frame straight. Um, if it's not straight, once everything is cranked down, then I just, you can bend it a little bit, you can twist it and tweak it, and you can get it perfectly level. I'm just going to take this 3M tape now, and I'm gonna cut eight strips, one for each side of the frame. And this is what holds it on. It's double-sided tape, very strong, um, should last 
basically forever. I'm gonna cut two 12 inch strips for the big frame and then six seven inch strips for the two small sides of the frame and then the square frame. What well, would be nice if I had some kind of tape cutter that I could put these rolls into and then just chop the length off so I didn't have to roll it out and measure it and cut it. It'd be a little faster. So I'm gonna take this frame, I'm just gonna lay each one down. Sometimes I cut these a little too long and you have to measure them out and cut them a little bit shorter, but it takes a minute. I've had one person tell me that these fell off their print when they were moving. I don't know if it was true or not because they never got back to me, but so far everyone else has seemed to have good luck with the 3M tape. Haven't had any problems with it. Hopefully I won't have any. It is possible that the frames could fall off if maybe it was cold out. Um, it is it's 15 degrees out today here in New Hampshire. So that is possible that the adhesive could go bad. Pull this off. Very bright. The colors on this are cool. I'm gonna take this, um, I don't know what, I don't know what this is called. It's some kind of photo paper that goes over um, like art so to protect it. It's got a plasticky paper feel, like almost like a waxed paper, but it's, I don't think that's what it is. Um, I use this to cover all my prints when I lay them down here and then when I pack them, I tape all the sides down. This keeps any dust and dirt off them also from getting scratched at all. I laid that the wrong way. Go this way with it so that it takes up less of it when I cut it. I try to leave like half an inch roughly all the way around so it folds. If you leave too little, you won't really be able to fold it. And if you put too much, then it just kind of gets in the way and doesn't look as good. I try to keep it like a clean tuck all the way around and tape down so that's just nice and tight when the customer gets it. Now I'm just going to take my print here and I measure out down two inches in two inches and then I put a dot on it. And that just allows me to line up the frame. I have someone that is gonna make, that is making jigs for all of these. I got three different sizes made so that I can line these up much faster. Um, but they're currently being made and I don't have them. It'll probably be a couple of weeks, I would assume. What I'll be able to do is lock those on each corner here, I'll have two of them, and they'll set in and then I can put my frame up to it and it'll make it exactly level um, on each of these prints and I won't have to do any measuring. I won't have to take the ruler and mark the dot and then put this frame on here and measure it out again to make sure it's level and avoid all of that. Take this tape here and I just pull tabs off of it all the way around so that I can grab, I can stick the corner on and it'll stay in place and then I can pull the tabs out from underneath and stick the whole thing down because if I pulled these all the way off Tried to line it up and stick it down, I, I, that would not work at all. So just put them on here, line up the dots on both the corners, which they're not perfect. So that's why I always measure again. So I take the ruler and I just see exactly where it is. Okay, it's usually always the same spot every time I make these. And then looks good. Looks good. Now that is perfectly level. Press that down and then I can just pull these other tabs out. And that print is all set and done. So these are the four that we started with and they're now finished. They all came out really good. If you guys like these ones, you're gonna really like what I have coming this week. Um, some much bigger prints, some really nice photos, a bunch of different customers that I told I would film. This one and the German Shepherd one here. So hope you guys like those. I'm going to show you the process as I do the bigger ones uh, coming soon.